Hi, dance friends. Stay with me on this quote quiz because it has some twists and turns. So this past week, Dr. Anthony Fauci suggested that we all stop doing something, not just during the pandemic, but for good. His statement prompted one writer to say the following. In the future, we will all separate into different houses ruled over by TikTok stars, and we will signal our allegiances by performing TikTok dances in battles when we encounter members of rival houses. So the question is, what did Dr. Fauci suggest we eliminate? What would these TikTok dances potentially replace? The answer at the end of this episode of the Dance Edit podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dance Edit Podcast. I'm Margaret Fuhrer. I'm Courtney Escoin. And I'm Caden Sneedon. We're editors at Dance Magazine and Dance Spirit Magazine. And on this episode, we'll be discussing a new website that's helping dancers navigate the gig economy, um, musing on whether the coronavirus might actually be changing dance Instagram for the better, and hearing from Houston Ballet soloist and social media all-star Harper Waters about how he's dealing with our mid-pandemic reality. Um, Before we start, just a quick reminder that we also have a daily email newsletter, which is the Petite Dance News Digest, which you should sign up for at thedanceedit.com. So it's definitely a ruminate on the bigger picture kind of time. Everything feels like it's slowed down, including the news cycle. Um, But before we all get into more philosophical territory, we did want to highlight a few important coronavirus-related news stories from this past week. So Courtney, go ahead and get us started. Uh, Dancer and choreographer Louis Johnson, uh, who's known for choreographing the film version of The Wiz, making dances for Alien Dance Theater of Harlem, uh, passed away at age 90 shortly after testing positive for the virus. Broadway officials announced that The Great White Way would be closed through June 7th, the date that the 2020 Tonys were originally scheduled to be held. And with this announcement came the very disappointing news that Beetlejuice, originally set to depart the Winter Garden Theater June 6th, would not be returning. And American Ballet Theater officially canceled its annual eight-week Metropolitan Opera House season, which was supposed to run May 11th to July 4th. That season was to have included the New York premiere of Alexei Ratmansky's latest full-length for the company of Love and Rage, and also, this hurts a lot, Stella Abrera's farewell performance. Um, Here's hoping Stella gets the send-off she deserves at some point in the not-too-distant future. I do second that emotion. Um, Speaking of Lincoln Center, the organization officially canceled all of its summer programming as well, which was to include the premiere of a new opera choreographed by Chanel da Silva as part of the Mostly Mozart Festival, as well as annual open air offerings like Midsummer Night Swing and Lincoln Center Out of Doors. It's looking to be a quiet summer here in New York. Yeah. So clearly the performance landscape is pretty bleak right now, and unsurprisingly, dancers are struggling. Um, So in our next segment, we wanted to talk about a new online marketplace. It's called HireArtists.org that just launched. And its goal is to connect artists who are looking for work, including dancers, with employers who need their expertise for one-off kind of jobs. I mean, like a a task rabbit for the arts world, if you will, and pretty much everybody has. that this kind of site even needs to exist, I think, speaks to bigger problems inherent in the gig economy and to some of the bigger issues that dancers have been facing for years that the pandemic has thrown into sharper relief. Um, but it also acknowledges a really real need. Yeah, which wasn't, I was a little skeptical when I first saw the headline about this um, and then continued reading and realized that um, the co founder Vallejo Gantner. Um, he was at PS122 for years and years and years. So if anyone has a really clear eyed view of both what the need is for artists right now, as well as the problems that are inherent in the gig economy, I mean, that's who it is. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really interesting idea. More than 200 artists have already signed up, including dancers offering dance classes, private lessons. I even saw someone offering grand modern floor work private, which just sounds like something that would be delightful to receive right now in this time period. Yeah, I mean, anything that gets real money into real dancers' pockets is is much appreciated. 
Yeah, I think it's just this speaks to a greater frustration with the the way the performance world, or I mean, the whole country really is structured mm. right now. I and mean, artists, especially performing artists, just have no systematic support. So they're forced to scramble in this kind of way all the time, but especially in a moment of crisis like this, when their usual revenue streams disappear. So it sounds like a really useful and well-conceived Band-Aid, but the yes. wound ultimately like requires major surgery a little a little more than than a band-aid i had the exact same band-aid thought i think um there was a great quote in here um if these artists can't do the thing that is their core practice what can they do almost every artist has probably double gigged their whole life how do we take advantage of the skill set that they've got and i think that is it in a nutshell the problems of the gig economy are not news to dance artists so in our next segment, we'd like to talk about a story that Teresa Ruth Howard wrote for Dance Magazine um, that touches on a different kind of, of fallout from the pandemic. The title of the story is, Has Coronavirus Turned Instagram Into What It Should Actually Be? And first, just a little bit of context. So back in 2018, Teresa wrote a different piece about Dance Instagram expressing dismay at the ways the platform had warped the dance world's whole value system with its fetishism of tricks and the extremes of dance facility. It was just like all archy feet and sky high extensions and 500 pirouettes all the time. Um, but now that coronavirus has shut down our usual dance outlets, Instagram has become this place that dancers go to work and create and connect in more meaningful ways. Um, in Teresa's words, it went from being mainly a tool of narcissistic self-promotion, to be sure it still is, into what could be ha called the highest form of itself, a tool for education, nurturing an authentic community. Yeah, I think for me, someone who was raised by educators, seeing that level of education that's now being offered, you know, that access not limited by geographic or financial means, for the most part, has been really amazing. Seeing all of these pro dancers really going out of their way to offer kind of cohesive training. Like I am currently obsessed with Isabella Boylston's Variations with Bella, where she offers up choreography and training on the variations that she performs as a principal dancer. Like if I was 13 year old bunhead me again, this would have been a dream come true. And it still kind of is. There was this really great meme on Ballet Moods the other day that read <laughs> me updating my resume to say that I've trained with Tyler Peck, James Whiteside, and Isabella Boylston. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that is Same. what's happening. Um, but yeah, and it's actually interesting to me that like Teresa's talking about getting away from the being this tool of narcissistic self-promotion. And it actually made me remember why I joined Instagram in the first place as like a young teenager when it was the platform was first starting. I joined because I wanted to follow Wendy Whalen and Janie Taylor because they would post all this behind the scenes stuff at City Ballet. And I thought it was the most intriguing look into what I assumed was this hyper glamorous life. But it also was a bit more real. And then Instagram has like kind of shifted a bit in towards being a tool for narcissistic self-promotion, as Teresa said. And now it's maybe shifting back a little bit. Yeah, there's nothing like a moment of crisis to sort of snap our priorities back into to focus. Um, and I, I also like that Teresa makes this point that it is, you know, it's generally true that greater exposure leads to greater inclusion, can lead to greater inclusion and greater diversity. Um, and the internet has always promoted exposure, but this moment does feel different. You know, it's with not just the, these big dance stars, but also all different types of dance schools and all different types of independent artists providing classes. Overall accessibility has improved in a way that feels significant. Um, so hopefully that trend will continue once this is all over, or at least we'll start having you know more and better conversations about how to create lasting change. Yeah, I think the New York Times had an article all about how in this moment we should be looking at what kind of world we want to create out of crisis. And I think for the dance world, potentially thinking in that vein too, what kind of world are we creating, at least on social media, once this is all over? And something Teresa pointed out that I really appreciated was talking about how it really this current moment is bringing everyone back to the fact that whether you are a principal dancer or a kid practicing in your kitchen, we all come together to take class. And that's really what the work is about. Um, so now we're all going to stop talking and <laughs> listen for a few minutes. Um, we're starting a new series called Social Dis Dancing. That's D-I-S-D-A-N-S. 
C-I-N-G, not sorry, <laughs> never sorry. <laughs> The puns um, just don't stop coming, do they? they? Never stop. Never stop. <laughs> um, each week, we'll be asking artists from different corners of the dance world to leave us quick voice memos describing just how they're coping with life right now. Um, so first up is the inimitable Harper Waters, a Houston ballet soloist who has a very savvy understanding of all things social media. Here he is. Hi, Dance Edit. It's Harper Waters, soloist with Houston Ballet. I hope this finds you all safe and staying positive. I also hope that you're inside and practicing social distancing and self-quarantining. We here at Houston Ballet have been off since March, technically March 12th. I'm actually still in Houston. Some of the dancers have traveled home, but I think like a lot of companies, we got the news when we were all going to be opening reps. We were about to open a mixed rep. We had just done the dress rehearsal for it. And it was such a shame because we put so much work and effort into the, into the final product. And we were wanting to, and we were excited to share that. It was a little heartbreaking, but it's, it was like, again, it was necessary for us to put it on pause. At the time, it was, we didn't know for how long we were putting it on pause. We thought maybe a week or two weeks. Um, but here we are with kind of no real end in sight. But my time has really been spent doing three things, which is social media, social media, <laughs> and social media. I have been blessed with the um, app TikTok. I'm a newly devout TikToker. I have, I'm using it to learn choreography that I've always dreamt of learning. I will recreate, uh, ring the alarm from Beyonce's iconic VMA performance. I've done single ladies and I've do, I'm doing it all with the TikTok filter and it's really entertaining. And I'm really inspired by the creativity that people have. Um, I'm learning my hips don't move like a lot of the TikTok trend dances, but I like to do them in my own way. I have been doing social media for the ballet, for Houston Ballet. We are becoming a virtual company where we've been putting out HB at home episodes that follow the dancers at their house and where they're staying. I'm learning about people who I've known for years and it's so intriguing and so exciting to see what they do for fun and how they are staying positive and what classes they're taking. But I just hope that when the pandemic is over, that companies are really, they adopt that these measures that they've been doing and really put it into standard practice. I appreciate all these companies sharing their work because they want people to, because they can't share it on stage and they want people to see it. I think that that is something that <laughs> should be done always. And I think that this is how ballet can have more visibility because I do believe that visibility is currency. And this is my efforts. This has been my efforts using social media. I mean, I don't, I don't expect companies to recreate Beyonce ring the alarm choreography on TikTok, but having more access to the dancers and the dance that they're doing is really, really important. And then the last way I've been doing, you know, surviving this quarantine on social media is with FaceTime and being able to connect with friends. I am single. <laughs> you can cry for me later. Uh, so I've been quarantining by myself. There's one other dancer here, Natalie, a demi soloist who lives around the corner. So We've been hanging out, the two of us, but that's the only person to person contact that I've had other than grocery, um, grocery store runs and ordering food. Uh, but FaceTime has allowed me to connect with people and keep that human interaction going, talking with my family and other friends and even just dancers in the company. You know, we, we get together on certain days and just chat and that has been really, really great because I didn't realize how much dance 
orchestrated my way of thought, my decision making, my routine, not having that regimented schedule and the uncertainty of when this will all finish is really uh, affecting my motivation. And it's not a motivation of why, why am I here? It's just why do I have to? I'm, I'm really appreciating what dance has done for my train of thought and my mental state. And so I'm really, I'm personally struggling with, with that in the sense of motivation to do, because it's very easy to sit on TikTok on the couch for hours on hours on hours. But you know, it's, it's a, it's a minor, it's a minor struggle amidst the greater severity of issues that are going on right now. And so, I'm really grateful. I have a roof. I have, I have food. I have Wi-Fi. So I'm, I'm doing well. I have my lovely dog and we are doing well here in Houston. I'm, I'm certain Houston Ballet will rise above this. You know, we're no stranger to overcoming tragedies, um, like Hurricane Harvey. And, uh, so people listening or who are lovers of dance, you know, I hope that they're staying positive and in times of uncertainty, I think what's, what's important is to do things that you know will certainly make you happy. So for me, that's not learning a new language because the reality of that is not going to happen. <laughs> Am I going to read a thousand books? Probably not, but I will be on TikTok. I will throw on a pair of heels. I will listen to Beyonce. And I will edit some fantastic videos um, and continue to do that because that makes me happy. Uh, we will we will jete over this very soon. I love you all. Stay fabulous, stay flawless, stay flexible. But most importantly, please wash your hands and stay inside. Oh, and stay fearless. Lots of love. Harper. Bye. I just want to stick so many of his quotes on a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Harper. So many t-shirt worthy gems in there. <laughs> um, obviously, if you are not yet following Harper on Instagram and TikTok at the Harper Waters, you should be doing so. Mm -hmm. So before we sign off, here's the answer to our long and windy quote quiz from the top of the episode. So this past week, Dr. Anthony Fauci suggested that we all stop doing something, not just during the pandemic, but for good. And his statement prompted one writer to say the following. In the future, we will all separate into different houses ruled over by TikTok stars, and we will signal our allegiances by performing TikTok dances in battles when we encounter members of rival houses. So the, the question is, what did Dr. Fauci actually suggest that we eliminate? And that would be... Shaking hands. Shaking hands. <laughs> you can greet each other with TikTok dances instead of shaking hands. There were 13 possibilities in this article, and I thought I'd be team TikTok, but upon reading it, um, we should all just learn the bullet track from Hamilton and use that to greet each other. <laughs> yeah, the article is it's from Elle magazine, and it's a list of alternatives to shaking hands. But yes, suggesting that we all do the flying bullet dance from Hamilton, which... Fun fact, originated by Ariana, Ariana DeBose, DeBose, the original yeah. bullet who's about to be Anita in the Spielberg West Side Story. Oh, that so was excited. kind of genius, too. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us. We will be back next week for more discussion of all the news that's moving the dance world. Um, and be sure to sign up for the daily Dance Edit newsletter at thedanceedit.com. Keep dancing, everyone. Bye. Stay safe. The Dance Edit Podcast is a product of Dance Media, publisher of Dance Magazine, Dance Spirit, Point, Dance Teacher, Dance Business Weekly, and the Dance Edit Newsletter. Our hosts are Courtney Escoyne, Margaret Fuhrer, Lydia Murray, and Cadence Neenan. Our music is by Celestine, with special thanks to Broadway Dance Center for helping us record those footfall sounds. Find out more about The Dance Edit and subscribe to our daily newsletter at thedanceedit.com. Thank you.